Hi everyone. Uh, in the past couple of days, a few people have asked about how I did this uh, growing vine effect. So I thought it'd be a good breakdown to start with because it shows the vine setup as well. Um, so I'll walk you guys through the Houdini and Unreal scenes and I'll show you how it's done. So here I am in Houdini. I've got two nodes. I'm just importing the rock pillar here with a file and uh, I've got my vine set up here. So I merged the rock pillar in. I remesh it so I have some more detail to work with for the paint. Then I'm just painting on it uh, where I want the vines to be. After that, I cull away the parts that the vines won't be on. Do a connect adjacent pieces. And this is a cool technique I found where you do the connect adjacent pieces and do it again, essentially, to create um, pretty cool patterns here for when the fine shortest path eventually happens uh, that will just change, a, like add a bit of variation in it and stuff like that. And then inside this next for each, I'm sorting by Y, which is um, just from bottom to top, which means the lower point numbers will be down here. And I'll use some of those lower numbers to just be the starting points um, for the fine shortest path. Then I'm selecting approximately 300 points and grouping them, which is just taking, saying whatever, um, one divided by the total number of points, so that'll give us like what percentage one is of the total number of points. And then say, if this uniform random value is less than 300 times this value, so whatever percentage 300 would be of the total number of points, then group those 300 points. Um, so it gives approximately that value, which is there, 318. Then um, another cool technique I found for um, just grouping a, an amount of edges, so this is like 1 in 12 edges are grouped, um, and that's going to basically just, uh, say, avoid them in the shortest path, which just creates a bit more variation in the paths that they end up taking, uh, which is pretty cool. So that's it for sort of defining the the initial shape of the vines. Then I just do some cleanup, stuff like that, uh, once this is finished. I resample to um, increase the amount of points and uniformly distribute them along the curve. Just some more clean up here, smooth it out. And I've also, from this resample, I get this value, the curve view, which is a value that goes uh, from zero to one along the length of a curve. And then um, to visualize that here, I've just colored it. That is um, the basis that I use for the mask for the growth of the vine. I add some stuff to it, um, but I'll show you in a minute. Then I set the p-scale um, based on the curve view again, which is that value. So it's I make a ramp of the curve view, set that to be the p-scale, then multiply it by this overall amount. Then just transferring the normals from the pillar to the curve so that I can then push them out slightly um, based on the p-scale and again a flat amount that I want them to be away from the pillar. Resampling those quite heavily because I end up making a VDB from them. You can do stuff like a sweep if you want to. Um, I found sweeping this sort of geometry is pretty messy. It um, creates a lot of extra geometry that you don't need, um, but it's your mileage may vary basically. I'm just doing this because I've, I can have a like slightly denser mesh for the vertex color later. Uh, once I poly reduce the result of that. But uh, after that, I create another value, which is a, a height ramp, a ramp across the height. So I get the, the maximum of the B box, which is the value up here, um, whatever the max point position is. And then I'm just fitting, um, the position in Y um, 
to from zero to one based on that value then multiply the curve view by that value so that it sort of smooths out the curve view a little bit and uh, makes it not just dependent on the length of the curve but there's also a bias from the height uh, which just sort of makes the growth a bit cleaner feeling and then just smoothing it all out with a, a power function here and then to visualize that I can just sort of um, delete based on color here and just see how the growth will look in Unreal. So it's a bit laggy for some reason, but uh, that's the gist of it, yeah. And then after that, I'm doing the video from particles. I won't click that because it's quite uh, heavy, but it's nothing too complex. Um, so that's created the video based on the P scale, and then I'm just poly reducing that here. And then I divide it just to make sure that uh, every every quad is triangulated. And then because I'm going to promote the color to vertex, and then uh, promote the uh, make normals as well for Unreal to pick up. And then I just export it there. And then for the leaves, I'm taking these curves again uh, from the vines from just just before they become VDB, creating a um, tangent normal on them, then also creating, um, transferring the normals from the pillar to them. So I have the tangents here, which I've renamed, um, which I could have just kept from, from here named tangent U, but um, I just wanted to visualize it as I did it. So, I've got those two values and what I'm going to do with those values after I randomize the p-scale a little bit is um, use them to rotate the points a little. So I'll visualize the result which is just scattering some grids and this is what the leaves are. I take um, those vectors, the tangent u and the, the n, and I use those to create a matrix that I can use to rotate the the points. So I create a matrix from the standard, you know, you've got your normal and then your tangent or your up vector or whatever you decide to use. Um, you cross those two together, these two, and then you cross these two together and then that will give you the matrix to use. So I've just set that as the matrix there. And I've got two rotation amounts here defined which are based on random value, um, so it's either it's taking this random value, fitting it from 0 and 1 to minus this rotation amount or the rotation amount for each of these two rotation values. And um, after I rotate the matrix by those amounts around the axes that I decided on, I can just use these sliders to rotate like so, oh, it's a bit slow for some reason. There we go. So there's that. And then that's the rotation sort of out. So without rotation, it's pretty much just picking up the normals of the pillar and the direction of the curve. Um, but then I add sort of a little bit of the rotation so that it has um, some variation uh, like leaves do. Of course, they're, they're not just glued down to the surface. The copy to points and again transferring the normals from the pillar to the leaves so that it's giving them a nice smoother sort of normal in engine so they're not really harsh. Um, promoting the CD to uh, the color to vertex again and promoting the normal to vertex also um, so that once I export Unreal can pick those things up. And that's it for the leaves and the vines. So I'm back in Unreal now and I'll give you guys a run through a little bit of the materials. So they're still a bit hackish and not the cleanest so I'll need to clean them up in the future to make them a bit more standardized and work sort of 
you know, out of the box for everything. But this is uh, sort of how they're set up now. So I've got the vertex color that's coming in uh, on the vines themselves. And then um, this is the previous setup where I was using a texture. The vertex color is just doing exactly the same thing as that. Then I've just got a power function so that you can change the values across the, the curve. Um, a one minus, this stuff is not necessary because it's, yeah, it's it should be changed. I'll change that in the future. Um, using a grow collection parameter, and this is the uh, parameter that controls the whole alpha erosion thing basically, and like the scaling of the UVs, everything. So this here is just used as a basic sort of alpha erosion with that mask that's in the vertex color. It's just clamped, it's using a length. It should use one of these pins instead, but I haven't actually got around to changing all that stuff. Um, and then it's just lerping the opacity between zero and one based on uh, all of this stuff here. It's not too complex of a setup. And then I'm also just displacing the geometry a little bit um, to sort of like bring in the, the ends here um, based on that same value. So that's gonna just keep those ends nice and tight as they're growing, as opposed to just being open holes, if that makes sense. Um, then the vine leaves are the same sort of setup, but also using um, the same stuff to scale the UVs. So I've got that same setup here, and then I'm just using another function, a power function, to multiply again by the grow and this stuff, and then it's lerping um, between 1 and 20 um, for the UVs, and then the alpha texture is just a really simple thing that I drew in Photoshop. Um, it's pretty pretty shitty. It'll change in the future for sure. Um, but that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, in my level blueprint, I've just got a, a event begin play here that's growing the vines uh, in a timeline. It's just, um, like I said, this should be like a linear line here, but it has to be tweaked a bit. Once I iron out um, all the kinks and get sort of the correct values coming from the map in like from Houdini, then I won't have to mess around with any of this. It should just be like a straight linear um, ramp. But for now, that's just what I've done. Um, and then it's just setting that grow um, material collection parameter, which is this one up here, that's just controlling the scale. So it's just setting that from that timeline. And um, that's pretty much it. It's just concepts of alpha erosion taken and also applied to um, like the scaling of the UVs. Um, it's nothing too, too crazy, I hope. Um, but I'm I'm pretty excited with how it worked. I think once I clean it up, I'll be able to use it sort of in multiple things and, you know, output lots of different vines over the geometry, have him sort of trigger stuff as he walks through so that it's all growing around him, um, him being the main character, Lucen, of course. Um, but I think that'll be a pretty cool effect once it's sort of um, evolved a little bit more. But I thought I'd show you guys where it was at um, because it made sense to walk you guys through the vines file and stuff like that. So once I do clean up the, the vines file, I'll probably make that available um, to download. Um, yeah, and just let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I hope that my stream of consciousness was uh, comprehensible enough. Uh, but if it wasn't, please let me know. Cheers. See you guys.